All right, so this video is mostly for introducing notation and setting up the objective for doing a coordinate descent. So we can derive boosting or derive out of boost that way. All right, so I just want to remind you uh, the formula for the misclassification error in my notation. Okay, so the misclassification error is just a fraction of points that are misclassified. So it's the sum from i equals one to n, so it's sum over data. And then this is one if we make a mistake, right? If the margin is negative, yi times f of xi less than or equal to zero. Okay, and then it's an indicator variable. So if we don't make a mistake, we don't lose any points. Okay, and then obviously we're gonna upper bound by the exponential loss. So it's sum over i e to the negative margin, yi f of xi. And uh, the picture, as you might recall, looks something like this. So it's uh, this function that's one if you have z being less than or equal to zero. Uh, this is the z-axis here, right over here. And then the exponential loss looks like e to the negative z. So that's the upper bound we're working with, e to the negative z. Okay. So now we're going to choose f to be a linear model. Okay, it's going to be a linear combination of weak classifiers. Okay, a, I'll write a linear combination. So weak classifiers. In reality, they can be fairly strong, but they're called weak classifiers because they arise from the weak learning algorithm. But here, the weak learning algorithm is just a, select, a selector of which, which of this pile of finite weak classifiers we're dealing with. Okay, so we write f of x equals sum from j equals one to p. So this is our sum over all possible weak classifiers. Uh, here it's finite. In reality, it would be infinite, but let's, let's just assume we're dealing with a finite set right now. And this is lambda j, hj of xi. Oh, sorry, hj of x. I'm sorry, I need to be very careful with the notation because I haven't specified, uh, this, is, this is for any x, right? So this is just a function of x right there. Okay, cool. Now, um, if I'm boring, then um, I'm just gonna choose the jth week classifier to be the jth feature, okay? I could, I could in reality choose the jth week classifier to be decision tree j, but but I'm boring today, and I'm I'm just going to choose it to be the jth the jth uh, feature, and I'm assuming here that everything's binary, all the data are binary, all the week classifiers are binary, everything's binary. Okay, so I'll write here if I'm boring. If I'm boring, then the math gets interesting. Okay, if I'm boring, h j of x equals x dot j. Okay, so this dot is a placeholder. Um, usually I write xi for the j for the ith training example, but now I want to indicate the jth feature, right? So I'm just leaving that placeholder so that when I write xij, I mean uh, the jth feature of data point i. Okay, so this here is the jth feature of x, whatever x is. Cool. Okay, so in that case, uh, f of x equals the sum over j equals one to p lambda j and then this is x dot j okay there we go cool and now i'm going to write the uh, the training error here i do it in a different color for fun okay so our train of lambda equals okay lambda is a vector here one over n sum over i and then here it is, um, whoops, e to the negative yi f of xi, okay? So I'll just write that down, e to the negative yi, and then f of xi now is this sum over lambda j, sorry, sum over j, lambda j, hj of xi, okay? Now, this thing I can write as, okay, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna change around the order in which I put things. So this is e to the negative, sum over j, and then I'm gonna put here yi 
hj of xi. So I can put the margins to, so that's the margin there, and then times lambda j, okay? So I have, you can see this, this lovely, this is the margin here for weak classifier j on data point i. Okay, and now I'm gonna write this sum uh, as a matrix multiplication, you'll see. So here it is. So this equals one over n sum over i e to the negative m dot lambda. Okay, m is a matrix, lambda is a vector, and this means take the ith component of that dot product. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this matrix M here. This is called the matrix of margins. This is a very important matrix in Adaboost. Um, it tells you the margins of every weak classifier and every data point. Okay, so let me just draw that here, um, and I'll put it in. I'll put it back in black. So I'll say where M is the matrix of margins. So matrix. Of margins and m equals uh, the following. Okay, so I'm going to draw this matrix here, and then this particular point, this particular a particular element of matrix M, is y i h j of x i. Okay, so this thing is the margin. Yeah. Uh, of i uh, for for the j j three classifier. Okay, so it is, it is literally the matrix of all of the margins of all the we of all of the data points and all the weak classifiers. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of intuition for the axes of this matrix. So the observations are along here. And they're indexed by i, it goes from i equals 1 to n. The weak classifiers are along the columns. Um, so I'll just write weak classifier. Uh, they're indexed by j, and they go from j equals 1 to p. Okay, and then Adaboost, as you know, creates a discrete probability distribution on the observations. And so um, you can think about there uh, being kind of a, a discrete probability distribution here on the data, like that, okay, cool. All right, now we're going to assume that everything in this problem is binary, okay, so the data, uh, all of the data points uh, live on a hypercube, so all, all the x's are, are sort of, you know, ones and, and well, actually, yeah, it, <laughs> because I'm boring, <laughs> I'm going to, okay. I'll, I'll confess. In reality, the data can be whatever they want, <laughs> but because I'm boring and I want my weak classifiers to have binary entries, then I'm going to force um, all of the data and um, therefore the weak classifiers to have binary entries. Okay, so I'll just write down here, assume that all weak classifiers are binary. So hj of xi are either plus or minus one. Okay, so then that allows the matrix entries to be plus or minus one. Okay, so you can think of this matrix M as determining whether we classifier j correctly classified this data point i. Okay, so if, if there's a one in this entry of this matrix, it means that we classifier J, like here, maybe I'll do it in a different color so you can see. I'll erase it later, don't worry. Okay, so it means that we classifier J correctly classifies data point I, okay? And if there's a minus one there, it means that we classifier incorrectly classified that data point. Okay, cool, so I hope you're um, uh, familiar with, uh, so I hope now you're familiar with this notation. I'm just gonna write down the main point once again, actually, I'll keep that pretty blue color. So I'll write down here the training error. This is what I wrote earlier, so there's nothing new here. The training error of lambda, okay, 
equals, and then this is the exponential loss in this nice notation, e to the negative, and then the matrix m multiplied by the vector lambda, and take the um, the ith entry in that um, in that multiplication, and that's that's the value for that um, exponent there. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do coordinate descent on lambda. And we're going to take the next few videos to actually go through that uh, coordinate descent calculation. Thanks.